Okay, let's try a few experiments to understand the nature of uh, the Akashic field, the source of all experience. So look at any object around you. Look at any object around you or just look at your hand. And uh, in between the object and the object that you call your body mind, there's a space. The space is not directly seen, it is inferred and experienced because of the object of perception and this object, which is also an object of perception, right? Because you perceive the body. So the space is an inferred experience. You don't directly see visually the space. You experience it as this inferred space. Now, science tell us, tells us that a cubic centimeter of this space has more mass energy than the entire visible universe. So this space is not empty, but imbued with energy, and I would posit also information. Now, close your eyes and imagine your hand and imagine your body or imagine two objects and experience exactly what you experienced with your eyes open. And you have an experience of mental object, mental objects and mental space. Okay, so this space is a, a subtle space, a subtle space. The other was um, uh, gross or physical space. This is mental space. The gross or physical space in um, in Vedanta and yogic traditions is called Bhutakash. And then the mental space is called Chittakash. Okay. Now, um, there's another space which is even beyond that. And that is that space which is uh, unimaginable, that is irreducible, that is fundamental, that is without cause, that has no shape, no borders, no form, that is infinite, that is um, incomprehensible, okay, that can only occur when we transcend the experience of mind and body through meditation. And in that transcendence, we know that space as the inner being that is differentiating itself into both mental and physical space, okay? Both mental and physical space. Now, in Vedic philosophy, this is Akasha, okay? Akasha is the physical element of space, is the most com common understanding of Akasha. And um, it is one of the five Mahabhutas or five elements. And in Indian philosophy, or we say Vedantic philosophy or yogic philosophy, Akasha is the subtlest of the five elements and it is said to be the substratum, the ground of sound, because vibration travels through um, through space, electromagnetic vibration, which is the basis of all experience. So this space is also associated with the mind and consciousness. Akasha as the subtle or spiritual space is more esoteric and is sometimes referred to as causal space or the space of consciousness. Akasha, in this sense, is the ground of all being, and it is said to be the source of all creation. It is also associated with the divine or absolute. So if we go and understand these two main types of Akasha, there are also a number of other ways in which Akasha is understood. For example, Akasha is sometimes associated with ether, the fifth element in Greek philosophy. It is also associated with prana or vital energy and with the bindu or point of potentiality. So Akasha is the common substratum of sound. Akasha is the source of creation. Akasha is the ground of all being. 
Akasha is the space of consciousness. This means that Akasha is the ground of all awareness and all consciousness and ultimately arises from the subtlest, causeless Akasha, which is called Mahadakash. So the physical space is called Bhutakash, the mental space is called Chitakash, and then the ultimate causal space is Mahad Akash, Mahad Akash. And uh, the understanding of all of this put together is the deeper understanding of what is called the Akashic field. Akashic field. So what is the Akashic field? It's also known as the Akashic library or Akashic plane. It is a concept again in the Indian philosophy that refers to the universal field of knowledge that contains all information about everything that has ever happened, is happening and will ever happen. It is believed to be a non-physical, non-mental plane of existence and is described as a library or archive where all the records are stored. So here are our final uh, thoughts about Akasha. Uh, it is a universal record of all events, thoughts and feelings. It is accessible to all, not all people, but all those with the proper training, especially in meditation and transcendence. And by accessing the Akashic field, we can get um, insights into so-called past lives, previous dreamscapes, current problems, future probabilities, and also uh, accessing the Akashic field for healing and spiritual growth. Now, how does this relate um, at all, or does it, uh, to quantum fields? So quantum fields are basically the fields that generate virtual particles that appear according to the uncertainty principle uh, and can be detected in uh, various ways, including um, you know, indirect, um, um, indirect uh, ways of directing, but uh, the Akashic, the quantum fields cannot be directly um, uh, seen or, 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 uh, or examined. And uh, these quantum fields are present in ordinary space, which is full of energy the energy um, that comes from the quantum fields is um, is creating the basic building blocks of the universe and um, the quantum field is present in ordinary space what we are calling bhutakash it is the medium through which all particles and forces interact the quantum field is not a physical object but rather a mathematical description of the underlying reality of the universe. It is through the quantum field that we can understand the behavior of particles and forces, and it is through the quantum field that the universe is created and sustained. The electromagnetic field, which is responsible for light and electricity, is an expression of the quantum field. The weak nuclear force, which is responsible for radioactive decay, is an expression of the quantum field. The strong nuclear force, which is responsible for holding the nucleus of an atom together, is the quantum field. The Higgs field, which is responsible for giving mass to particles, is the quantum field. So what is the difference between the quantum field and the Akashic field? The difference is the Akashic field is felt to be a field of awareness. The quantum field is so-called objective um, understanding of the same field but in uh, science it is not considered to be self-aware i would say that's the next step that science needs to take the quantum field has to be understood as a field that is self-aware and knows itself by differentiating into so-called particles, force fields, atoms, molecules, and the material universe. Let me know what you think of this. Mm -hmm.